What's up you guys, in today's video, we're diving into part two of evaluating the health of your wood business. Let's dive in. All right, well, welcome back. In today's video, we're gonna dive into part two of evaluating the health of your wood business. In the last video, if you haven't watched it yet, you need to dive into that. We talked about lead generation and we talked about lead nurture. And if you have not walked through that process of evaluating those aspects of your business, you need to do that. Go check out part one. But in today's video, part two, we're gonna talk about sales and manufacturing. So let's dive straight into it. When we talk about sales, what we're gonna do, we're gonna ask a couple questions. You need to rate yourself on a scale of one to 10 with each of these questions, then overall, how how would you rate the sales process inside of your business, okay? So the first question that we're gonna ask for sales is do I always finish every quote asking what are your thoughts? And so this is one of the things that I see a lot of people not do and it really kind of bites you in the rear end. So a lot of times what you'll do is you'll have a conversation with a prospect, they'll want a quote on something, you'll just give them the quote and leave it open and not say anything. Or what you'll do is you'll say, what are your thoughts on that? By the way, yada, 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 yada. Finish your message. When you give somebody a quote, finish your message open-ended. What are your thoughts on that? What are your thoughts on that? Because you want to pull out their objections. A lot of salespeople are scared of objections. They think that if somebody has an objection or has something that they that they have questions about, that it's a hindrance to the sale. But in reality, buyers ask questions, right? If you have somebody that they don't have any questions, they're not a buyer, typically. Buyers have questions and you need to walk them through and they need to understand why they are buying, okay? Number two, do I empathize with the customer and ask clarifying questions? Okay, so once you've asked, what are your thoughts on that? They should give you some feedback in some way. Way. You need to always empathize with the customer. You need to say like, hey, totally understand. Hey, totally get where you're coming from. Something along the lines where you never disagree with the customer. You always say, hey, I totally get where you're coming from. Let me ask you this, and then ask clarifying questions to get more to the root of where you can offer a solution, right? So for example, hey, that's way outside of my budget. Hey, I totally get it. If you don't mind me asking though, what was your budget? Because I have a lot of different options. Uh, we have a lot of different price points and I may be able to find a really similar product, maybe change the wood species or do something small that we could get closer to that budget that you have. If you don't mind me asking, what budget did you have? So you wanna ask clarifying questions in your sales process to get past the objection itself and be able to continue moving the conversation forward. So number three is do I negotiate or put them on a new product that is more affordable? So I see this a lot too, is that they'll have somebody say that it's outside of their budget and they'll be like, all right, well, hate it for you. Best of luck, you know. Well, see you later. And you could probably put them on another product or you could negotiate a little bit and probably land somewhere where you convert the sale, okay? You don't wanna discount stuff and put yourself in a bind by selling stuff and making no money. That's not what I'm getting at. But you should always have healthy enough profit margins in your price to be able to justify giving a little bit when you're negotiating. Number four, this is a really important question to ask yourself. Do I get quotes out quickly? I see too many business owners that they say, okay, sounds good, let me put together a quote, I'll send that over to you tonight or tomorrow morning, does that sound okay? And it could be nine o'clock in the morning. And you don't need to type up a formal quote every single time. What you need to do is you need to get them the information. So if they're like, hey, I saw this, this table, I want one just like that. Perfect, let me get that quote for you in two to three minutes, is that okay, can you stay with me? Yes, yeah, sounds good, okay, awesome. And you wanna ask them questions, can you stay with me? And then when you come back, say, hey, are you there? I got this quote ready for you. You don't wanna give out quotes when they're on to something else, right? You wanna give out quotes when people are, are currently engaged with you. Hey, I've got this quote ready for you, let me know when you're ready and I'll walk through it with you. You want them to say, hey, yeah, I'm here, I'm ready. Okay, sounds great. So based on what you're looking for, this table exactly as you see it, these are all the features of this table. It's normally this much, but right now with our 25% off sale or 30% off sale, it comes to blank. What are your thoughts on that? But you wanna give out quotes quickly. When I say quickly, we want this to be around five minutes from the time that somebody has clarified that they want a quote and you've asked them all the questions that you need to give them an adequate quote, okay? So number five is do I type up invoices and send them quickly once I convert a sale? One of the things that's really important in business is speed to money. Okay, so when you get a verbal confirmation that number one, they want a quote, and then number two, that they are okay with the quote, they're ready to move forward, you wanna get that deposit as quickly as humanly possible, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna say, sounds great, let me type up a quote in the next five minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and send that to you for you to solidify your spot in the line, go ahead and send your deposit in. How would you like to send that deposit in? And so what you wanna do is you want to use reasonable justification for why they wanna go ahead and send you the deposit. If you're just like, hey, I need you to send me the deposit, 
now, that doesn't work. So you got to say, hey, you know, right now we're selling a lot of tables. We're selling a lot of X, Y, Z. You know, we're closing several deals today and tomorrow. And I don't want you to lose your spot in line. As soon as you put your deposit down, we can solidify your spot in line. We can get your stuff to you faster. And then number six, and this one's really important, is do they sign or agree to a cosmetic standard before the sale? Do they sign or agree to a cosmetic standard before the sale? A problem that I see a lot of woodworkers face is that they are not clear about what their standard of quality looks like. And so you have a client that has a totally different viewpoint of quality versus what the business has a viewpoint of quality. So if you're building everything by hand, there's going to be small imperfections, right? Because it's not printed out of a machine in Vietnam, you're building it by hand. But the client is expecting it to look like something that's in a Haverty's or look like something that's in Ashley Furniture, right? Which we all know is veneer. It's not any good, but for them, it's printed, it's flawless, right? So we need to get really clear on communicating to them what is our cosmetic standards, okay? So each of these questions, rate yourself on a scale of one to 10, rate yourself overall with your sales process on a scale of one to 10. Last part of the video, we're gonna dive into your manufacturing and fulfillment processes. So a couple questions around your manufacturing. Number one, do I order materials in time for me to have everything that I need to finish a project when I start it? So am I ordering everything in plenty of time so that when I start on that project, I have everything that I need to complete it? One of the biggest hangups that I see with woodworking businesses, you'll start on a project and realize, oh, well, I have this one little thing that I have to do that I don't have, and I've got to order it and wait on it for two days to get here, and I overpay for one day shipping or whatever. When you start an order, you want to make sure that everything that you need is in your possession, okay? Number two, do I have a rhythm of ordering? ordering consumables on a consistent basis so that I don't run out when I really need it. So what are your consumables? That's your glue, that's your screws. It's the things that go into every single project that you use. It's your sandpaper, it's your stain. Do you have a rhythm for checking on your consumables and making sure that you're placing small batch orders every week or every other week, make sure that you don't ever run out. The worst thing is to get to where you're working on a project, you're flying and you get to where you go to stain something and you don't have enough stain, right? And you gotta run to the store, you gotta order it and it's gotta come in, right? So again, and these are little five, six, dollar mistakes that end up eating your lunch over the course of a production schedule if you're trying to be efficient, okay? So number three is, do I have a process in place to streamline my manufacturing process? So there's lots of different things that you do, right? We have 20 different table leg designs that we offer. We've got all these different things that we do, and it's really, really important you have a process for every single one of those things. Here's the reality. The first time you do it, you're not going to have a process. The second time, you're probably not going to have a process. But the more that you do it, you need to start really thinking and evaluating, is this the most efficient way to handle this? Is this the most efficient way to do this? Okay. Number four, this is a really good question that number three kind of leads into is, have I thought through all of the areas that slow me down the most and figured out ways to improve them? Okay. So have I thought through all the areas that are the slowest areas in my manufacturing process? For me, it's typically finishing, painting, lacquering, and sanding. Those are typically what slow me down the most. So have I thought through all those areas and figured out ways to move faster? It's improving your sanders, right? It's improving your spraying process, moving to a different product, moving to a process that allows stuff to dry faster or allows the, the thing to move quicker, right? So, and then number five, am I currently producing at the same rate that I'm selling? Am I currently producing at the same rate that I'm selling? If not, why not? So this is one of the most important things things when it comes to business growth is that if you are producing less than you're selling and you're selling more month after month after month than you're producing, your lead times are going to get longer, right? And then it's they're going to get long enough to the point that it affects your sales and you'll see your sales start to drop, okay? If you're producing more than you're selling, it means that your lead times are shortening, but you're eventually going to run out of work, right? So we want to always be selling slightly more than we're manufacturing, right? Because that's how businesses grow. We increase sales, we increase manufacturing output capacity, okay? We increase sales, we increase manufacturing capacity, so on and so forth, right? That's how I started in my business doing $3,000 a month and we've done $167,000 in a month, right? Over the last four, five, six years. So it's gradually increasing the processes behind the sales output. So with that being said, guys, this is your second video. Make sure that you rate yourself with all these fulfillment questions and then you rate your overall fulfillment process. Guys, also, if if this is helpful to you, be sure to subscribe. Be sure to like the video. Leave me a comment. Uh, let me know that this is actually helping you on your journey to become a better woodworking business. So uh, with that being said, I've got some resources for you. We got free ebook. We've got path to $10,000 every month and beyond. And then we have woodworking business accelerator program below. If you don't have any idea what any of those things are, click the links. We got videos around all of them to explain what they are and how they're going to help you. So with that being said, love you. I'll see you in the next video where we dive into evaluating your business part three. See you there.